Hey guys, today we're going to do Unit 2, Lesson 2, which is all about the Pythagorean Theorem and its converse, all right? So let's just start out by remembering what the Pythagorean Theorem is. Um, I know most of you will remember it is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But what does that mean, okay? So we have a leg and a leg and a hypotenuse. So it is the sum of the legs or sum of the squared legs, okay? Equals the hypotenuse squared. Very simple, okay? Um, and we are going to jump right in with example one, okay? Given a right triangle with a leg that measures five millimeters, so I have a right triangle. Let me go ahead and draw that. And remember when there's this little box in the corner, that means that it is 90 degrees, so you know that it's a right triangle. Um, I have a leg that measures five, so, and I have a hypotenuse that measures 13. Find the length of the missing side, which is right here. So if I'm going to draw a right triangle real quick, this is a leg, this is a leg, and this is the hypotenuse right here. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and use our Pythagorean theorem and start to solve this. So I have x squared plus 5 squared equals 13 squared. So here's the simplest way to um, solve this equation, okay? I need to subtract the 5 squared from both sides. So 13 squared minus 5 squared. And then I have an x squared still. So if you recall that the inverse, or to simplify and get that x by itself, the opposite of a square is a square root. So you would square root both sides, and that's how you get the x by itself. All right, and so in this case, if you went ahead and simplified this, you would get 144, which is simply 12, which came out to a perfect integer. When that happens, we have what is called Pythagorean triples. So let's just jot down a couple that we're going to probably see quite often. I have 3, 4, 5. 6, 8, 10, and then the one that we just found, which is 5, 12, 13. Okay, so these are common Pythagorean triples. All right, let's take a look at example number two. Now what we have here is an isosceles triangle. I know that it's isosceles because these little lines tell me that these side measures are the same, okay? And it's not equilateral because this bottom measure is different than these measures. So it is isosceles. So when I draw a line, down the center of an isosceles triangle and it meets at a right angle, it cuts these two in half. So they are of equal measure. So 22 divided by 2 would be 11 and 11. So now I have a leg and a hypotenuse and I need to find the missing leg. Okay? So Let's do x squared plus 11 squared equals 24 squared. 
and I'm just going to go ahead and subtract the 11 squared from both sides. And to get the x by itself, I need to square root this. Okay? And if you simplify this, it will be the square root of 455. which in your graphing calculator comes out to be 21.3. Now you can type any of these lines into your calculator. Um, so let me just remind you, okay, and I might need to zoom out a tiny bit. Well, now this is good. So again, this is my cell phone. This is the Wabbit. EMU app and you can type in this exactly how you have it if you want to okay now yesterday's lesson did teach us how to simplify these radicals um, but if you have a calculator it makes it a little simpler so here's what I do in this graphing calculator I do second x squared which brings up the square root symbol and I could type 24 squared plus, oh, I'm sorry, that should be minus 11 squared if I type the right thing, 11, let me just start this over, second square root, 24 squared minus 11 squared, and then I hit enter and it gives me that 21.3. All right. Let's take a look at example three. In example three, I have all the different sides, but I need this down here. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna find the length of this side, and then we're gonna find the length of this side and we're going to add those together okay <clears throat> excuse me and I'm going to set this up all as one equation so let me show you how I'll do that so the 14 is my hypotenuse because it's the opposite side of the right angle um, so I have x, that's x, squared plus 12 squared equals 14 squared. And then I'm going to go ahead and say x equals the square root, if I subtract these, 14 squared minus 12 squared. Okay. And if I just type that into my calculator, um, I will get, well, I can just simplify this, get the square root of 52. Now let's do the blue side. So I have this leg down here. I'm going to call this X. X squared plus 12 squared equals 29 squared. Let's go ahead and say... We're going to do the 29 squared minus 12 squared and then square root this. And so this x is going to equal the square root of 697. Okay. What I need to do to solve this is to add the red and the blue together. So the square root of 52 and the square root of 697, add those together, and I'm going to come out with 33.6. I just typed this in my calculator, okay? And this is how you get your final answer. So the red 
plus the blue equals the total length. Awesome. All right, let's take a look at a word problem. And these are pretty straightforward. Now, I recommend that whenever you have a word problem, you want to go ahead and draw an image for yourself that will help to represent the situation, okay? So in example four, it says, a roofer leaned a 16-foot ladder against a house. So I'm going to start out by drawing myself a house. Okay, so here is my house. Nothing fancy, okay? And he leaned a ladder up against it. So here's the ladder. And that ladder is 16 feet long. Okay? If the base of the ladder is five feet from the house, well, that's this right here five feet away, um, how high up the house does the ladder reach? So they want me to solve for this missing side, okay? So I've got a leg and a leg, so x squared plus 5 squared equals 16 squared. Let's go ahead and do the 16 squared minus 5 squared under my square root. And then let's round our answer to the tenths place. So that means one decimal over. And I'm going to get 15.2. 15.2. All right. Easy breezy. Let's do another one. A 31 foot support wire is attached from the top of a 25 foot telephone pole. Okay, so here's my telephone pole. I know that it is 25 units high. And then they're going to attach this wire to the top of it. Okay, so there's the wire. And they told me that the wire is 31 feet. They want to know how far from the base of the pole does the wire meet the ground? So they want me to solve for this side, okay? So I've got x squared plus 25 squared equals 31 squared because that is my hypotenuse over there. This would be the right angle. So let's subtract the 25 squared from both sides and then square root that to get the x by itself. And when I type that in my calculator to simplify it, I'm going to get 18.3. 18.3. That's how far away the wire is from the pole. Okay, so that is how we're going to be applying the Pythagorean theorem. Let's go ahead and talk about now the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. And here's what this says, okay? So we know that we have um, A squared and B squared, right, for a right triangle. Well, we can use this to talk about and determine what kind of triangle we have, okay? So I'm just taking the Pythagorean theorem and I'm flipping it around kind of backwards. So C squared, C squared, okay. So if the C squared equals the A squared plus the B squared, then I have a right triangle. Okay, and let's just add a little note here so that we all remember a right triangle has one 90 degree angle. Okay, what if the C squared is larger 
if it's larger than the sum of the squared legs, then my triangle is obtuse. So what does an obtuse triangle look like? It has one angle that is greater than 90 degrees. Okay, and now finally, what happens if it is less than? Let me use green for this. If the C squared is less than the A squared plus B squared, then my triangle is acute. All right, and in an acute triangle, all angles are less than 90 degrees, okay? All three angles are less than 90 degrees. So, um, so we just keep the C squared on the left and that helps us when we're classifying so that it doesn't get confusing with the inequalities facing the wrong way, okay? Now there is a note here that we need to always check for first. Check this first. Um, if the sum of the two smaller sides of a triangle is not greater than the largest side, then it's not going to even equal a full on triangle. Okay. So for example, if I have two and I have one, and then I have a side here, that's five, it would not equal a triangle. There's a missing piece there. Two plus one is less than five, so it's not a triangle. Okay, so it has to kind of add up right. So let's start to do that. We've got four examples that we're going to look at here, and then our lesson is completed for today. So our first step is always going to be first, determine if this can equal a triangle, okay? So take the two smallest sides, three and seven, add them up, and is that greater than the largest side? So three plus seven is 10, 10 is greater than nine. So yes, that can make a triangle. Now we're going to classify what kind of triangle it is. So I'm going to take the C, the largest number, okay, C squared, and then the A squared plus B squared go over here. So I have 9 squared, 3 squared, plus 7 squared. And so I know this is 81, and this is 9 plus 49. 9 and 49 is 58. So I need to choose which inequality um, or statement will fit in here. Are these numbers equal? Is the C squared greater or is it less than? In this case, the C squared is greater. Okay, 81 is greater than 58. So I have an obtuse triangle. Okay, let's do that again for example seven. So the first thing I'm going to do is add this up and determine can it equal a triangle. So 20 plus 21 is 41. Is 41 greater than 29? And the answer is yes it is. So I have a good triangle. The largest number is my C, okay? So C squared, A squared, B squared. So we're going to fill them in and we will determine the relationship at the end. Okay. So 29 squared 
20 squared and 21 squared. I'm just going to use my calculator to simplify this. And I get 841 over here. And then 29 squared is 841. So the relationship between these two numbers is that they are equal. When they are equal, I have a right triangle. A right triangle. Let's take a look at example eight. We are almost finished. So first thing I do is determine does 4 plus 11 equal a number greater than 16? The answer is no. 4 plus 11 is 15. So this would not even be a triangle. Okay. And then our last example. Determine if these could equal a triangle. 17 plus 17 is 30. Oh goodness, 7 and 7 is 14. So 34 is 34 greater than 22? The answer is yes, it is. So we have a triangle. Let's use our largest number here. C squared is 22 squared, which will give me 484. A squared and B squared is 17 squared plus 17 squared, which will give me 578. So to compare these two numbers, 484 is less than 578. So when it's less than, I have an acute triangle. All right. Well, that's it, guys. Um, there is a practice assignment for you posted. So um, good luck. Let me know if you have any questions. And until next time.